Hello and welcome to No Friends Gaming! I'm Adrian and today we're playing the final solo scenario of Voidfall, Fall of Civilization. We're playing on hard mode and using the pre-selected focus variant to make things more challenging. That means we must choose which focus card we are playing before we get to see the alert card for that turn. We randomize the technologies and our faction for this scenario. We're playing as House Navaris. Their ability is when you gain corruption, produce a resource type of your choice. We've gone with Origin card A, which comes with this starting tech, Combat Replicators. In combat as the invader, when you win a combat, you may gain a bounty token and retain all installations in the combat sector. I thought that would be a really fun tech to try with with this one, Salvage Scanner. In combat as the invader, if the combat takes place in a Voidborn sector, you may gain a reclaim token in the same sector. So we would get lots of rewards for invading, we'd want to invade a lot. If we're going for that combo, we are most certainly pursuing a military strategy this game. The alternative starting tech for Navaris would have been Cybernetics. That's more of an economic tech, it gains you more resources when you place guilds. And it's a great technology, but it's probably better to do something different this game, since I happen to research Cybernetics as part of my last game, which you can see in the previous video on this channel. Now, I will mention the technologies that are available here so that you know what I have to choose from. You can pause the screen now if you'd like to read through them all. We have shields, escape pods, targeting, data refinery, hyperdrive, tactical transport, salvage scanner, and purifier. And the improved techs that will become available in cycle two are hyperdrive, salvage scanner, shields, and data refinery. Now the crises. These are the things we need to achieve to get rid of them. We must research our improved starting technology, and we must have three or more pure sectors and eight or more deployed fleet power to pure sectors. So with all that out of the way, now we can reveal our galactic event. It is Know Your Enemy, five card plays this cycle. We must place a Voidborn on an adjacent Voidborn sector. That would be this sector. It's the only one adjacent to us right now. There are now two Voidborn here. And I know these miniatures might block your view of the fleet cube, so I will mention that when relevant, we happen to have two corvettes in our outpost sector right now, and one corvette at home. Now, players may collectively corrupt twice to remove a harbinger. For solo, that is really expensive. Uh, yeah, if we had friends, if we had uh, playing co-op other pe people to spread that cost between, uh, and also spread the responsibility of then purifying that corruption, that would be easier to swallow. For us, I don't want to gain so much corruption early on. It's going to really inhibit our agenda scoring or uh, make skirmishes really bad for us if we put it on our house map. So yeah, even for House Navaris, we get to produce resources when we gain corruption, but at the moment we would get one credit or two science. Our yields are just not high enough to make that worthwhile. So let's forgo it. And then rewards at end of cycle. For having four sectors, we gain a number three glory token, or for having stockpiled resources, 10 of one type, uh, we get to advance one of our civilization tracks. And this would be the better reward, but it would be harder to do, again, because our yields are not so high. We may have to see how lucky we get with reclaim tokens that we could be getting with salvage scanner. A lot of them give guilds. So if we happen to get guilds of the same type, we might be able to uh, produce enough resources of a type. Uh, but otherwise, that probably won't happen. Anyway, we now need to choose five cards to play, and I have put some of the priorities on top of this stack. So we have House Navaris' special progress and reinforcement cards. These could be quite strong for us. We also have heroic progress out on the row here, so we'd have to choose between the heroic or house card. Um, the house card, this is interesting because it gives us corruption. And again, corruption early on is probably not great for us, but later on, when it can help us to produce once our yields are higher, that could be really strong. So for this first cycle, we might actually prefer heroic progress, which does the opposite. It removes corruption. Um, but yeah, we'll consider that a bit later. Uh, we can also play heroic conquest and heroic politics. So these are both quite strong cards. We should try to do both of them, especially since we want to go for a military strategy. Uh, temptation is here because of the exploit ability. It lets us copy an action on a preferred focus. For Novaris, that includes innovation. That's this discarded card here. So we could actually use the innovation invent action here to research a tech uh, via temptation. 
and uh, Prosperity, that gets us an agenda card. Very important to get those early to start scoring them by the end of cycle one. Development could put out guilds to help us get our yields up to then produce more when we gain corruption. And production is probably not as much of a priority since we can just produce by gaining corruption. But in any case, how do we choose just five of these? It's always such an impossible choice. I think I would prioritize getting technologies early on. So progress and temptation for sure. And then if we're going military, we do want to do politics and conquest and make use of the heroic cards. Uh, reinforcement is fine. We may need to use it between the two attacks to replenish our forces. But if we are getting multiple combat-oriented techs, we might be able to avoid playing reinforcement because I would really love to be able to do prosperity and get that extra agenda card while also going up on a Civ track. That's quite strong. Uh, I think we'd better check what, what our agenda situation will be. Yeah, so Conquest can get us an agenda, um, but if we're playing these cards following it, then only reinforcement could be played with one. Politics doesn't have an agenda that matches. So reinforcement, we have to play a support agenda with that. Uh, one of these. And yeah, uh, the the statecraft track for Novaris already gets us a support agenda. So actually, we could play politics first, get a support agenda, get something else with conquest, but it, we need to save an action for the end of cycle to make use of that second agenda card. Hmm. Another thing. We want to research our improved starting tech, which is uh, improved combat replicators. This can actually help with combats. It will let us deploy when we win or tie in combat. So that would actually help with subsequent combats. But still, that's still helpful. Thing is, to research it, we would need to get to stage one on one of these tracks. So if we're going up statecraft anyway, our temptation could let us advance again to qualify for that and then research the improved tech. So that's... That's pretty easy to do. Oh, but only if we play Temptation after politics. Because mm. reinforcement could get us another bump as well. But ideally, we would get a Civ bump before we play Temptation. And that is possible if we get a Might Agenda. So Might Agendas can advance you on your lower Civ track. If it's the first advancement for statecraft, that will go up first. So we could play Prosperity, pick up a Might Agenda, play it with the Progress card, or Heroic Progress. Then, then maybe we can get away without playing Reinforcement? I think I'd like to try that, because some of these early sectors are not going to have much Voidborn resistance. So I think we can take them on without playing Reinforcement, and then we can do our two Conquests, but also do our two researchers, also get two, two agenda cards. So that seems like a solid plan. We will start with Prosperity. So let's reveal our first alert. It's a level two crisis. Panic in the fleet. After resolving a conquest focus, choose to also recall fleet power twice. Or you can discard this by removing two non-home installations. Well, that's not possible. Uh, prosperity can get us an installation, but we would need a second. So yeah, and then this top one, we were planning on playing Conquest at some point. Just recalling the fleet power is pretty painful, especially if we're not playing Reinforcement. We're not going to have much spare fleet power. So I think I'd like to discard this for a Catastrophe, which I'm always really happy to do early on. Like If there's a mildly inconvenient crisis, just get a Catastrophe. We can purify or gain resources. That really helps with the early game. Uh, so yeah, and this is, I would say, more more than mildly inconvenient. Okay, we'll go ahead and resolve our turn. So Prosperity will do the Flourish action. We pay one Materials, and we get to advance on the Economy track. That will gain us one Energy and Materials. Then, Organize. Deactivate one Fleet Power, pay one Energy and Materials. Just pay those resources again. Two, gain an Agenda card, and we want a Might Agenda. So, for having four or more Credit Yield, seven points, for having pure sectors with one or more shipyards or star bases, two points. And there is one such sector here. If we place 
more star, ba uh, sorry, more shipyards now. We can actually gain like four or six points with this. I don't think our credit yield is getting high enough yet, though. It could eventually, because there is a megalopolis sector with two innate bankers' guilds and six population. At that point, combined with this bankers' guild we started with, we would actually have max yield, which for credits is eight, eight yield. But that's a bit further down the track. I think we can fish for, for hopefully a better agenda. Let's see. So the top two here, we've got for three or more pure sector defenses or star bases, five points, for having each fleet power in a, in a pure sector, two points. Okay, so this is quite an easy way to score points. I do like that one. And, and sector defenses, so easy for us to achieve because we retain them with combat replicators. So we are certainly going to advance down this way where the high value glory tokens are. So, I mean, again, that's getting fulfilled probably next cycle, but in the meantime, we can still score quite a bit with the right-hand side of that card. Now, for eight or more food yield, seven points. For every pure shipyard and starbase, two points. So the food yield is going to depend on whether we can find food guilds with reclaim tokens. That's not something we can rely on. Um, at the moment, four points for our two shipyards and potentially a bit more upside, but this is clearly the better one. Let's get rid of this. We can also place an installation. So we could place a sector defense, start working towards this, but if we don't think we're going to achieve this anyway, because we'd have to, we'd have to conquer a couple of these sectors to get more. Um, the origin card here can get us three points for each pure sector with one or more shipyards in it. So, and then that's just going to keep scoring for us in successive rounds. So I think I'd rather place the shipyard now and just hold off on getting those sector defenses. Another thing is, would we need a sector defense here, right? If we invade beyond the sector, it's not going to be adjacent to Voidborn. So a sector defense there would be useless anyway. So fine. I think I'm happy with that. That's a whole turn done. Now, I'm pretty sure we can't we can't afford to do this this top thing, recalling the fleet power. And the bottom thing is impossible. So, okay, let's get a catastrophe. And we can purify or gain five resources. So, because we were about to play heroic progress next, which already purifies, and there would be, there's no second corruption for us to purify just yet. So I think we'll, we'll gain the five resources. And let's see, we've got two sites at the moment. We're going to produce more with heroic progress. So... Why not gain credits and just have more flexibility in paying for things? We now have eight credits. We don't need more science this cycle. We should have enough for the entire cycle, yes. Okay, so we're going to play Heroic Progress with this agenda card. And we'll reveal the next alert. It's a war, so resolve the crisis board. And for successfully defending, gain a bounty token. Okay, so the Voidborn Strength is currently one plus, well, one for this two, but we are about to purify. So it'll be one. One strength comes along to this sector. We've got two corvettes, so we blow it up without reprisal. We're fine. So we can easily defend against that war. Now, let's do this agenda effect. So we will go up on our lowest track, which is a tie. We'll choose statecraft and get a support agenda. This is for having one or fewer corruption, six points. For having every two pure food guilds, five points. Again, a bit too reliant on luck for my taste. Although getting to one or fewer corruption is something we probably want to do anyway. Uh, hmm. If we're conquering, we're conquering twice, right? Politics and conquest. The heroic conquest card can purify. We can, well, actually that's the thing. Temptation's getting us corruption too. We might, yeah, we, we might not get one or fewer corruption then. Hmm. Let's look at the top two, because at the moment that, that agenda is probably scoring a zero. Okay, for two pure engineers guilds and two pure miners guilds, six points. For every pure sector with one or more bankers guilds, three points. That's one here. That's just three points so far. Uh, this is for zero corruption on sectors, seven points. And for pure sectors with no empty guild slots, four points. So this is closest to being filled, and we are about to place a guild with heroic progress. So that would be four points over three points. And then maybe if we get more catastrophes, we can clear more corruption from the sectors. So it could even score us more. So fine, that's the better one. 
and then we can store that agenda. Now, heroic progress, we will first invent, we will pay one food and deactivate one fleet power. We will purify and research a technology. So we do want salvage scanner, yes? Because there are some other combat oriented texts there, but we can get that eventually with politics when we go up to this stage of the Civ track on Statecraft. And yeah, we can decide then which tech we need more. So we'll get this now, we'll gain four points. And we get to activate a fleet power or deploy one. Well, if we're trying not to have to use reinforcement, we better deploy at every opportunity. So we're going to make a third corvette in this sector. All right. Now experiment, we gain a scientist's guild, which should fill this sector to help with this agenda. And so science production is now at six, corresponding to a yield of four. We now produce science and get four science. We're now at six total science. That was our whole turn. So the war will happen and we defend against a void one attack power of one in this sector by having more initiative. And we must pay these resources. So one materials, one energy. We also get a bounty token. which gives us one materials and science. All right, and that's the war done. So we choose our third card, which will be temptation to get another tech, to get our improved tech, yes. So we must, well, we must first reveal an alert. Uh, so a level one crisis, all that glitters. Gain a banker's guild while already having one or more banker's guilds. So we would just need to gain another one. But again, that's easier said than done, relying on reclaim token luck. Uh, discard this by resolving the skirmish, gain two points for successfully defending. And we can defend against the skirmish. That, that's great. Okay, good. So we're definitely discarding that for that effect. Um, so, temptation, conspire, we'll gain a corruption. So if we're about to do a skirmish, we'd better put this on a sector... We do want to keep our sectors at zero corruption, though. Wait, we're about to we're about to clear this crisis. So then, even with this on our player mat, Voidborn strength will be only one, which we can deal with without losing anything. Okay, let's put this on our player mat then. So, huh? Yes, there's a risk, of course, because if we can't clear all the corruption and we get more military crises, then then the skirmishes might not be, um, we might not be able to deal with them. But yeah, look, if, if there's a tough crisis to deal with, we can just get another catastrophe. And that's going to help us with purifying. So we should be on the lookout for another mildly inconvenient crisis. We're going to value getting a catastrophe more now that we know we need the extra purification. Yeah. So for gaining corruption, we can produce a resource. At the moment, that would be one credit or four science. Well, definitely the four science, since that one credit just seems a bit too marginal for my tastes. And we now have 11 science. I mean, that's more, way more than we need, but I'm sure we'll use it at some point. So better than the one credit. And then we will advance on the statecraft track. So we will get to uh, activate one fleet power. And then we look at the top two galactic events for cycle two. So we have Dark Ages and Humanity Rising. These will both allow us five card plays. First, Dark Ages. Place a reclaim token and Voidborn on one adjacent Voidborn sector. Then corrupt the Might agendas. So we already have a Might agenda, so we probably don't care about that. We're pretty happy with that, actually, because uh, we won't, shouldn't need to get another. Spend up to six science to gain the same amount of credits. So yeah, we've got... We've got excess science. So that's really great for us, actually. Convert it to credits, then we can pay for more things. For having eight or more upkeep at the end of cycle that we've met, we will get an agenda card. For having eight or more pure installations, eight points. Okay, both of these are very easy for us to achieve. We have, we will probably have four agendas at the end of next cycle. At least that's what you should aim for. And so that's already eight corruption. There's already corrupt, sorry. 
upkeep, not corruption. <laughs> Whew, don't want eight corruption. So we've already got upkeep here in this sector. Our home sector also has upkeep. That's one of House Navarro's special abilities, have one extra upkeep. So that's, that's fine. And then eight or more pure installations, well, combat replicators lets us retain sector defenses. So if we get these sectors by the end of cycle two, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven from this agenda. So we just need to find one more. That one's pretty easy, easily done. Okay, humanity rising. Place a reclaim token once, bounty token once, and voidborn twice on each voidborn sector with at least four population. That would be these sectors here. So we, we'd be getting six new voidborn, which is going to be really tough to deal with. Um, even with these extra resources, that's a lot of voidborn to punch through. So I'm not sure I like that effect. Uh, this one, gain a corruption to your civilization track, otherwise corruption anywhere. Uh, and then gain three science or advance a, a civ track. Well, that's a really cool benefit. It's probably better than just converting science to credits. Um, the end of cycle rewards. For three or more credit yield, produce food, energy, and materials. Again, we should very easily get that uh, credit yield by um, getting the megalopolis and those bankers guilds there. Uh, five techs. Five techs, ten points. Yes, I mean, we are we're going to have a third tech, and then we just need to research twice next cycle. I think that's pretty easily done as well. But I just don't like this effect. That's too many Voidborn. If we were going for an economic strategy and just getting a few sectors and then building them up, we might not care if some sectors later on are tougher to take. But in our case, we want to conquer as many sectors as possible. So making it harder for us is, yeah, it's just too painful. Uh, so I think we'll put Dark Ages on top. This will only give us one new Voidborn to deal with. Uh, it still gets us a reclaim token in future, so yeah, that's not too bad. Dark Ages. Now, the exploit ability. So we're going to copy our innovation focus, this action, invent. Pay two science, and we can research. So we go down to nine science. And now that we qualify for an improved technology, we can get advanced combat replicators, which does not have an immediate effect, but it will gain us six points. So we are now at 20 influence. So in future, in combat as the invader, when you win or tie in combat, you may deploy to the combat sector winning a tie. Uh, and just like the uh, basic version, when we win combat, we can gain a bounty token and retain installations. Okay. So that's a whole turn done. Now we can... Oh resolve this crisis for researching the improved tech. And then we have to do a skirmish to discard this card. Well, Voidborn attack is zero plus one. So one strength total fails in the only sector that's vulnerable to a skirmish. So we win. And for successfully defending, we get two points. Lovely. So we got to 22. And now we should just conquer twice, right? So... We've got heroic conquest and politics here. And if we do heroic politics first, we can research first. That might help us with the, the upcoming combats. If we do conquest first, we can upgrade glory, which is always nice to do earlier so that you score more. Um, but the cost of this is to recall a fleet power. Yeah. So if we did that, and then we had one spare corvette, because we want to leave one behind to hold the system, we would actually lose this sector. So, so we probably shouldn't go for the early glory. We should do politics first so we can actually take the sector. Yeah, all right. So we're going to play heroic politics. Good. Next alert. It's another level two. Progress by the shadow. Advance the sieve track while it's already corrupted. Or discard this by paying four resources. And we do have lots of excess science, so we can easily do that. It's just we would like to gain another opportunity to purify, as I said. And this is inconvenient enough that I think I'd like to just get a, a, a catastrophe. If we purify this sector after gaining it, and then let's say we go this way, right, to get the high value glory, we will... Use Heroic Conquest, which purifies as well. Okay, so then we would have no corruption in sectors, which fulfills this agenda. So, yeah, that's going to become a catastrophe then. That will help us score with this. 
And sure, the catastrophe is 20 points to the Voidborn. That's more than the seven points that we're gaining from this. But remember that, you know, we've got that extra purification and that saves us from having to purify later and saves us actions. So overall, I do think it will be worth that 20 points. Okay, heroic politics. We will first inspire paying two credits and one science in order to got statecraft and gain a trade token. Let's gain the trade token first and see what this bounty token is. It's one resource of our choice. So let's just get a, wait. I was about to say, let's just get a credit, but we will need to pay for upkeep. And at the moment we only have three food. So we're about to play another agenda with conquest. We will have I mean, we got the trade token there, but we're going to have four, five, six upkeep. I think we better gain a food to help us pay. And then we'd better hope we get more food off a bounty token or something. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. We, we really need to keep the upkeep in mind now. Uh, inspire. So we get to go up on the statecraft track and research. So, okay, we're about to do combat. Actually, we're about to remove a Voidborn and then invade with two Corvettes. So we would win without losing anything. Because we've got these technologies here, shields with salvo absorption, escape pods, which lets you put fleet power in your home system if you lose one in combat. But those will only help if we actually lose something in combat. So they won't help us immediately. Uh, targeting is five extra initiative, which we won't need. We're attacking with more initiative anyway. Hyperdrive can let us move forces to the front lines. So this could be redeployed before attacking. And yeah, I mean, that Corvette's not doing much otherwise. Um, I mean, we don't need it yet. And when we do Conquest, we can already redeploy doing this action. Yeah, so then Hyperdrive is not strictly needed either. Tactical Transport, with the Conquest focus, we can activate a fleet power and deploy. So... So that will help with the conquest action too, but nothing for this current attack. That's funny because, you know, there's so many military cards, but nothing that really helps us right now. I guess we'll look at the immediate effects because this can let us deploy. So would shields, right? And we can redeploy it with um, conquest anyway. So, you know, both of those would be good. We just have to see what happens with the subsequent attack, which would be here. Ah. Huh. Escape Pods gets us a trade token. Hmm. See, I'm still thinking about the upkeep. The trade token can get us more food. And when we attack the sector, the sector defense will blow something up. So Escape Pods will replenish that force in our home sector. So that would help for invasions in cycle two. I mean, that's further down the line, but... Yeah, like hyperdrive can get us resources, but that's going to be a bit of a crapshoot. We don't know if we'll get the food we need. Escape pod solves our upkeep problem. So let's just double check. If we invade this, we'll have two corvettes here. We do heroic conquest, we can redeploy this one. So we'll have three corvettes. We can shove two in here. Actually, we will deploy one with combat replicators. We'll have a third one to shove in here. So even with one being killed by the sector defense, we have two initiative versus one, and we can win the sector two. Okay, so we actually don't need another combat-oriented tech, something that helps us with the present combat. So I think it's fine to take escape pods just to help us with upkeep and then help us with further combats in the next cycle onwards. So this is going to gain us four points. That takes us to 26. We gain a trade token, which will get us two food. We also activate one fleet power. Then we do the prevail action. So we pay two energy. Well, we only have one energy. So an energy and a credit and a science. Two, remove Voidborn fleet power in an adjacent sector and invade. So we'll send in two Corvettes. There's now two versus one. We have more initiative, so we blow it up and gain this glory. So we will score three points, taking us to 29. 
We also get all of these bonuses. So combat replicators, since we won the sector, will let us deploy there. And we get a bounty token. We also get a reclaim token from salvage scanner. Okay. So let's look at the bounty first. It's another one resource of our choice. So one credit. Because you've got enough food now, right? We've got the six food we need. We would only be able to spend one trade token. We'd have four, five, six corrupt um, upkeep. I don't know why I'm mixing up corruption and upkeep. They're completely different things. Okay, so reclaim token. And it's a banker's guild. Okay, probably don't need it if we're eventually going to go here, but instead of one resource, sure, we'll get the guild. It could help us with like imminent credit production, which actually I know for a fact that this next heroic card is innovation because it was dealt out during setup. So we had to put it on top of the stack and that will produce credits. So yeah, now our credit production is two instead of one, effectively one more resource when we do that production. So those are resolved and the whole heroic politics card is done. So this thing, as we said, we can deal with this card, but we'd rather purify. So catastrophe, please. That will mean we can purify this new sector we've gained. All right. So finally, so that was four cards. We can play Heroic Conquest. We've already determined we can do that and conquer this sector. Uh, without needing to reinforce. So that's nice. We are going to play it with this agenda. We're probably going to use a trade token because you'd want to redeploy this, gain the glory. Yeah, all of these are great effects. So we'll play a trade token with it. And we're doing a level one crisis. Corrupted but not broken. Deploy twice in corrupted sectors. Or discard this by corrupting the might agendas. which is already happening, right? Because we've put the Dark Ages event on top. That's already going to corrupt the Mind Agenda. So this is not a cost. This will corrupt it first, and then when the event happens, nothing, nothing will happen. Okay, that's pretty funny. All right, so we're going to do Heroic Conquest. Ah, because, again, if we do the prepare action first and improve our glory, we have to recall fleet power, which we could do from home, but then we only invade with two corvettes, and we lose one to the sector's events, then there's a tie. In the case of a tie, we can still win using combat replicators, but we just lose an extra corvette by having this voidborn fire on it. And so, because upgrading the glory first only gets us one more point, I think I'd rather attack first. Yeah? Well, first we have to redeploy. So then we keep one extra corvette deployed, which is going to help us in the next cycle when we invade some more. All right, so we'll strategize. We'll pay one energy and credits. Don't have any energy, so that's two credits. To redeploy, this corvette moves up and gain an agenda card. So what do we need next? We have a might agenda. We're playing a support agenda. So we would want to get a... Wealth or Dominance Agenda next. A Wealth Agenda can let us place a guild and produce. Uh, so that's great to do, but as we place more guilds with Reclaim Tokens, we might not need it. Uh, we can just produce by getting Corruption with our House Ability. The Dominance Agenda lets us invade more times, and that's always fantastic. Like I, would, I think I would prioritize getting a Dominance Agenda in this case. Because, um, again, we've got Innovation coming up. So we want to play innovation. We can use the dominance agenda with that straight away, right? Next cycle. Um, we want to do innovation early because it will research us techs. So it can research us more technologies to help us with combat. The thing is, though, it would research and improve tech. That's one of its abilities. And we already have one. We would need to gain another threshold on our sieve tracks to research a second improved tech. We'd have to play something before innovation. I mean, it could, we could play politics before innovation, but again, 
the politics card is the one that helps us attack, right? So we would want to do that after doing innovation when we get more text to help with attacks. Um, we could go up on economy then, which would mean playing the prosperity card again. That's interesting. Prosperity can gain us an agenda card. So if we gained a might agenda to go with prosperity at the start of the next cycle, we could then get a dominance agenda to go with heroic innovation as our next action. So, so we, we might just get another might agenda. And, and the might agendas are about to be corrupted. So if we want more might agendas, now would be the time, right? So again, I don't think much of that one. Let's see if there's an even better one here. Um, so for having eight or more stockpiled sites, seven points. For, for pure sectors with three or more installations, six points. Okay. Um, the, the stockpiled sites seems pretty easy, but the installations, we'd have to go out of our way to take installation placing actions. And if we're just like spreading out and getting a whole bunch of different sectors, uh, I'm not sure how easy that will be. Uh, for three or more shipyards or star bases, the pure six points. That one's very easy for us. It's already done. Uh, for every pure sector with three or more deployed fleet power in it, seven points. And I'm not sure we want to concentrate our forces so much, given that we want to attack so many different sectors and, and hold them down with just like one fleet power would be most efficient at the time. So uh, I think depending on which reclaim tokens come out, some of them are installations, this could actually have more upside. And in any case, at the moment, I would still prefer this might agenda. So fine, we'll choose this one. Now, we've done the middle action on Heroic Conquest. We will now annihilate. So we pay, we pay one food, but we cannot spare a food. Right, so we'll pay one credit, and then we will pay two energy. Okay, to do this attack. And so we're going to send these three corvettes over here. Now, no, no, no. We must lose one corvette to the approach damage from the sector defense. Then escape pods triggers. We send this guy back home. They escaped. And now we have two initiative versus one, so we blow up the Voidborn. We have won, we retain the installation using combat replicators. We gain this glory, we gain six points that takes us to 35. Now we get this harbinger who, since we have this corruption, we'd better place this on the economy track. We also gain this reclaim token, we gain a bounty token and a bonus reclaim token. We also get to deploy to the sector for winning the combat. All right, bounty token first. It's an energy and materials. Then a reclaim. Uh, plus this one. So four points. And then, so we're now at 39. This one is gain a sector defense or ship, well, a, an installation or two points. So... Yes, again, I'd rather gain the shipyards to get three points each. Because one sector defense should be enough to hold that sector. Put that down. Okay. And then we can prepare. So we will recall one fleet power, which could be this one now in our home sector. That's not doing anything for us. In order to activate two fleet power and upgrade a glory token, this becomes four. That's all three actions? Oh, right. The annihilate action let us purify. So this is gone. We also have this agenda card. Right. So we get to activate a fleet power and place an installation. So... This sector is vulnerable, isn't it? Yes. At the moment, we're getting a Voidborn attack strength of one. We can't handle that without a sector defense there. Right. There we go. Easy peasy. And now we store that. Good. So that was our entire turn done. 
We discard this crisis by corrupting the might agenda offer. And we go to evaluation. So, first, a skirmish. Of Voidborn Strength 0 plus 1, they will attack in either of these sectors where there's um, where we're adjacent to Voidborn, but we have sector defenses, so we just blow up that one Voidborn and we don't have to suffer anything. Then we must pay these resources. So one materials, one energy, one science. Then we pay for upkeep. We have two, four, five, six upkeep. And we have six food. So we just pay that. We're down to zero food. Then safe haven's not relevant. We must gain a number three token because we do not have 10 stockpiled resources of a single type. And then we get to score our agendas. So for our origin card here, every pure sector with two or more fleet power in it, four points. There's this one, so that's four points. For every pure sector with one or more shipyards, three points. There are three such sectors, nine points, 13 so far. For every corruption on our house mat, unfortunately there is one, minus two points, so that takes us to 11 points, right? Four, nine, 13, 11, okay. So that takes us to 50 points. Then for three or more sector defenses or star bases, we only have two. So we don't get the five points there, but for every deployed fleet power to pure sectors, two points, one, two, three, four, five. So 10 points there, we are at 60. Then for having zero corruption on our sectors, which we do, seven points, for every sector with no empty guild slots, that is pure, four points, one such sector. That's 11, taking us to 71 points. All right, so ends cycle one. Now we'll go to cycle two, we deal out three new heroic cards, so we have innovation, as was foretold, leadership, and development. Now, we must do these alert cards, so... Don't need the ones. We do need two level two situations and two level threes. We also get two wars. Mix that all up. We also gain a Harbinger. So, again, with our corruption here, I think it's safest to put this on the economy row. Yeah, the, this is starting to get quite expensive, though. At the moment, we have zero food, zero energy, one materials, one credit, six science. Now, the Dark Ages event will let us convert the science to credits, so that will help a bit, but... Yeah, maybe that is better on the military row. Although if we can't pay the resources, we can just gain a third catastrophe. Ah, I do prefer putting it on the economic row. We can gain corruption to produce more stuff, maybe. Uh, innovation will produce as well. When we play prosperity, we will get a trade token that gets us more resources too. Yeah, okay, I think we'll be all right. Now, what else? We will... Remove a trade token and this improvement block tile, and then we get the Dark Ages event. So, place a reclaim token and Voidborn on one adjacent Voidborn sector. Uh, if we are going to invade for higher glory up this way, would be nice to improve this sector. But that would be a third reclaim token. We would get a fourth of salvage scanner. If we get unlucky, we might actually gain too many guilds or installations to fit in the sector and have to forego some. So, so why not just improve this sector and, and we want to take this at some point, yeah? Because of the Harbinger, we'll need to clear it. So yeah, so we'll also put a Voidborn there. That's now slightly more difficult to take. And we corrupt the mind agendas, but it's already corrupted. Oh, who did that? All right. Now, spend up to six science to gain the same amount of credits. So, we have six science. We could, we could convert all of them. It's just if, uh, if a war comes up, we will need to spend a science. And we did want to do prosperity before innovation, potentially. 
when innovation with us produce more science again. So that's, yeah, I think just in case we will only convert five of our science, saving one. And so then we will go up five credits. We now have six credits, one science. So now we choose our cards and we did a bit of pre-planning last cycle. Prosperity with this agenda would let us go up on the economy track to unlock another improved technology. Then we play heroic innovation, which would allow us to research and improve tech. We can get an improved tech and, and we would want, okay, so prosperity will have to pick us up a dominance agenda to play with innovation. That could be a, a, the last agenda we store as well. And that will let us invade with the new techs that we're gaining. Um, that's three more cards we need to choose from. I would really value progress. And I think we need to start gaining corruption to produce resources to pay for stuff. Could be pro progress conquest politics. But let's see. We also have heroic leadership and development. Again, maybe development is not so needed if we are gaining guilds through reclaims, although we didn't we didn't get any on our last attack, which was un un unfortunate. Uh, huh. I don't know. I just don't value the development action as much. Leadership would be great, though. If we can invade this way, get so much glory, and then score it again using the top action here. Um, and leadership could actually still let us invade, right? So instead of playing three invasion actions uh, on printed on the cards here, we could gain a second dominance agenda and invade using leadership. And we can do that with the heroic innovation card that does let you gain an agenda. So given that, I think... Conquest would be the least favorable of these cards. Progress gets us tech and the corruption. Politics improves glory and gets us advancements on statecraft. Uh, so this is probably the track that we're maxing out this game. And so yeah, want to play politics when we can. Yeah, so these two cards and then leadership. That would already be five actions, right? Okay. So not these four. I think I'm pretty happy with that plan. Let's just go ahead. So we are going to play Prosperity with this. We should have returned a trade token. Sorry, that's returned. I played that with the Conquest card. We did have one more to spare. Yes. All right. But we don't want to play a trade token now. We don't need this yet. Okay. We decided, let's look at the alert. It's a level three. Saving grace. Keep a dominant agenda after using its action to successfully invade a population five or greater system. And there is a such such a sector over here, but it's too it's too far. Because our next invasion would be with the innovation card when we play a dominant agenda. Hmm. Well, let's just see what we can do with the discard here. This is gain a harbinger to an adjacent sector and resolve a skirmish, which we can easily defend against. It's just the harbinger. Having an extra harbinger is annoying. We can place it here where we won't have to deal with it for a while. Uh, yeah, we can clear a harbinger with leadership at some point. Eventually, we might do a safe haven or two. The, yeah, we could save this on the military row because we might play a second dominance agenda with leadership and we could use that to take the megalopolis. But in the meantime, we won't be able to handle the Voidborn strength if wars happen to come out. So I think we place the Harbinger. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that, that's probably all right. Last game, we gained two extra Harbingers from an event, and we were still able to deal with them. So one, one Harbinger here should be okay. Fine, let's just do 
do these actions. So Flourish will pay one materials to advance on the economy track, gaining a trade token. When we gain the trade token, we can get, well, we don't need science, so we'll gain the two credits. We could gain these resources instead. That's also tempting knowing that we will be short on food again. Uh, we currently have zero food. But we will need credits to pay for things too. I think we'll gain credits in the first instance. We'll look for more opportunities to gain food though. That may be an issue. Two credits, please. Now, organize, deactivate one fleet power, pay one energy and materials, but we don't have those, so we'll pay two credits. To gain an agenda card and a an installation, and I think we're trying to get by with only one sector defense per system. So in that case, we'll gain a shipyard here. We can still defend against a skirmish of one, which is about to happen from this corruption. Ah, uh, okay. So an agenda card, a dominance agenda, right? So this is for one or more pure six population sectors, which would be this one. We're bound to get that by the end of cycle, right? Five points. For each stage on your society track, four points. We have not advanced society at all. So yeah, let's not do that one. So. For having a sieve track at stage three or higher, four points. Well, statecraft, we would just need to get two bumps. We're already getting one with the politics card. So we weren't necessarily planning on gaining another. Hmm. Hmm. But all right, this is for every pure sector with three or more population. And we've got two and we're probably getting two more. So if we can purify them 12 points. That's fine. Not the best for cycle two onwards, but fine. This is for stage two on your society track, five points. For every pure sector with two or more upkeep, five points. We, we don't have any such sector right now. We only have sectors with one upkeep. To develop enough, well, we would have to play the development card to start building out more things. But still, like we're not going up society at all. Let's just ignore that. Okay. So we're keeping this agenda. Yeah, and we also have to do this effect. Huh. We could get, we could get another trade token, but I, I just, I always prefer going up the sieve tracks if possible. It's just that we haven't bothered to advance in society. Um, thing is, it's fine, I think, in this case, because then it just puts us one away from this threshold to get another advanced tech. And yeah, we'd just like to uh, unlock more of those opportunities, right? So let's go up on society and that will get us an engineer's guild. So I'm tempted to put it here so that we can fill up the guilds and be able to score more with this agenda card, but that's only two population. And filling this up would just mean more upkeep and we're already struggling to find the food. Let's place it here and put our energy production up by four, which is a yield of three. Okay. So that's all done, yeah? We resolved those two actions of prosperity. This, oh, well, is this better than our current might agenda? I don't think so. Is that seven points? We can't get three installations in the sector without going out of our way right now. Yeah, all right. We'll store, put this back instead of storing it. So now the skirmish here. So we get a harbinger as well, uh, which we'll just go here since we don't care about that sector so much. And skirmish of uh, size one, and we have these sector defenses, so nothing happens to us. Good, gone. Now, heroic innovation, I believe, before we do all these invasion things, and we'll play it with this uh, agenda. And, and we might use a trade token too, because yes, we need another agenda card to then use with leadership to invade again. Ah, uh, yes. And it could help us clear a crisis. I guess we'll see if the next crisis is bad, 
because that would um, really secure our decision. It's a level three. So gain a trade token while already having two or more trade tokens or discard this by removing a trade token and losing three resources. We we'll definitely don't want to do that. That's so wasteful. But can we gain another trade token? Uh, we're gaining some text. We're gaining an agenda. Not easily. Until we play the politics card. No, we're about to use a trade token now with innovation potentially. So, so we do that and we use the bottom action consolidate to get rid of this crisis. Okay, cool. So we will use a trade token therefore. We want to do all three of these actions. And so we will begin with... Well, let's see for a moment. We can get advanced salvage scanner and nothing else right now with this action. Although we can research a basic tech and then get the advanced version of that. So that could be hyperdrive, shields, or data refinery. And so what's going to help us with this combat the most, I guess, is what we need to decide. And that would probably be, well, between shields and hyperdrive, right? Data refinery doesn't help with combat. Um, so hyperdrive is really just redeploying stuff. And we, we already have all our stuff on the front lines. So shields, actually. Improved shields will give us approach absorption. Really helpful if we're about to attack um, where there are sector defenses. So we will do the research action first. We will pay four resources. So well, we don't need the science anymore, right? So we'll pay one science and three credits, because that's all we've got left. Oh, man. So now we have zero of everything and three credits. Ugh, we're so broke. We might need to get a catastrophe just to get resources. Um, so we're going to get a basic tech, which we've determined will be shields. That allows us to deploy a corvette at home. Then we can produce credits and science. So we will get two credits and four science. Those are our yields. Now we can do the experiment action, so we will gain advanced shields. Advanced salvage scanner is still good, though. It could let us remove corruption, right, if this is the next sector we're taking. But, but we can't take the sector easily without shields. I think we look for more opportunities to purify later. We do have... This fallen house sector, House Cradmore, that can let us purify and gain us the purifier tech. And that can let us purify more. So that could be a way that we clear all this corruption in the end. I think we get shields first. That's more important. We will get six points, taking us to 77. Now we get to remove a void bond from an adjacent sector. With improved shields, if we attack the sector, we have two corvettes to spare. So we would have two corvettes. We ignore the approach damage due to this effect then it's a tie. Two Void one versus two of ours. Then we fire at the same time. Our salvo absorption works, so we kill a Voidborn without reprisal. Then we have two initiative versus one, so we kill the other Voidborn. In the next salvo round, we lose nothing if we attack the sector, now that we have improved shields. So we do not need to make this any easier to take. Instead, we can remove a Voidborn here for when we come to attack it later. All right. Now, consolidate. So we will spend two resources and, well, now we can spare the science, actually. We can spare the science. I'm just worried about these costs as well, but, like, there's only two wars. Yes, we cleared once. Two wars that could come out, two science to, to pay. So we can spend two science, we'll have enough to pay for the wars as well. All right, spend two science in order to gain an agenda card, which should... Hmm. I was about to say we should probably be another dominance agenda to work with leadership, but we can get an agenda with progress as well. So if we are serious about using the progress card, then... No, but it would be a might agenda, and that's more corruption, which we really can't afford to take. Let's just get a dominance agenda. So, of these, 10 or more po pure population, 4 points. And then for stages on Civ tracks, you can get 2 points for being in stage 1, 4 points stage 2, 6 points for stage 3 or 4. 
Statecraft is getting to stage two. Economy is at stage one. So that would be six plus four, 10 points. 10 points, probably not as much as this. Uh, Statecraft at stage two, which will be five points. Every two stockpiled resources of food, materials, and energy, one point. And at the moment, we have zero of all of those. But we will possibly get more yield, especially now we've, we're on our way with energy, maybe. That has more potential upside, I think. So at the moment, I still prefer this dominance agenda, but this one is could get better depending on what reclaim tokens we get. All right. We also get to clear a crisis, so we'll get rid of this one, because uh, this one we will probably achieve at some point just by going around and attacking stuff uh, and then replenishing our forces with escape pods and combat replicators. Right. So now that we've fully resolved... Sorry, this... this agenda card was being played with it, right? I was about to say we fully resolved innovation, but we still have to play this agenda card. So now we get to attack. So we could attack this sector. But this ancient ruin sector could let us do a... Th oh, right. Wait, 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 wait. This sector lets you do a third action with innovation. We actually didn't need to use this trade token if we attack that sector first. Do you know what? I like that idea. So we're going to do a, a cheeky undo here. We're going to return that trade token because instead of, we can always save this action for after. Um, so we can actually do this attack first, then resolve this. But this action would happen the same way anyway. We're going to send two Corvettes into this sector. Because with improved shields, we still win, as we've already established, right? Salvo, uh, sorry, approach absorption, then two versus two, salvo absorption, we kill one, then we kill the other with high initiative. Then we can pay one science to do that third action. Good. But let's let's gain our combat rewards, right? So we score 10 points for glory. We get another technology. That's the beauty of this sector. So we can actually get, because now we qualify for another improved tech, we can get improved salvage scanner as well for when we eventually take these sectors. So let's take this and score six points for it. So that takes us to 93. Now, we get a bounty token and an extra reclaim token. Okay. So, and we also get to deploy to the sector with re, uh, combat replicators. So we get one resource of our choice. Let's just gain a credit. Wait. Now that we're paying science over here, we might actually need more science. No, we can always produce science with progress when we gain corruption. Yeah, so let's just gain a credit. We need food. Okay, I'm starting to get worried about food. Let's gain a food. Oh boy. We gain a reclaim token. It is quite potentially going to be useless since there's no guild or installation spots in this sector. It is, yeah, a miner's guild. Or one resource, so let's gain one food. There we go. All right. So we've conquered that sector. We used that science to do the third action here, but we already resolved it. Now we've completed our heroic innovation turn. And now we should play progress, politics, and leadership. Now we would play leadership after we gained this glory. So we need to do these attacks first, and we'll save leadership for last. Oh, politics has a science cost as well. Politics has a science cost. If we reveal a war, we are not going to be able to pay both science. We have to start with progress. Okay, we'll start with the progress card. So, hmm... I was about to try and figure out whether we play a trade token, but let's look at the alert card first. It's a level two crisis. 
It's this is the way. Take all three actions of a focus card, uh, which is easily done with a trade token. What am I on about? We don't need trade tokens for progress. We've got the ancient ruins. Okay, fine. You can discard this by uh, decreasing population in the pure sector, not at home. But we don't need to because we are about to take all three actions of the progress card by paying that extra science. So embrace. We can't get another advanced tech right now. It would have to be a basic tech. So given we've got escape pods, I would really value getting hyperdrive. That's a supreme combo because hyperdrive will let us move the escapees back into the fray. So yeah, let's gain corruption and let's not make skirmishes worse. We'll gain it to a sector. Uh, we are allowed to corrupt our home sector. That's something Novaris can do. Um, so we'll just place it there. But I'm pretty sure we can clear all these if we take this fallen house sector at some point. And for gaining corruption, we can produce, let's produce science. So we get four science, putting us at five total. Now we can research hyperdrive, which gets us four points, taking us to 97. And then we get three bounty tokens. So food materials, two more materials, and then resource of our choice, which will be food. So we'll gain two food and three materials. Okay. Now we can do these other actions. I guess we'll start with the ambush action. So, oh, this already lets us redeploy. But it's fine. We'll use hyperdrive redeploy first, then do this invasion. We have to invade a corrupted sector. All right, so hyperdrive. We're going to move this corvette. One, two, three. And then this one through the wormhole, four. So now we can attack this sector. Oh, we'd better pay the cost of this. So two energy, one science. But we have two credits, one science. Okay. Uh, right, so now we can attack with two corvettes. Again, with improved shields, we absorb that. We absorb a salvo. We kill the remaining Voidborn. We get the glory. We will get 14 points. It takes us to 111. That will be lost at end of si uh, the round. We retain that installation. We get a harbinger. Man, these are this is getting harder and harder to deal with. We'll put it. We'll put it here. Six, seven. We are about to. When we invade with politics, we'll get another Corvette out, right? Yeah. So that will allow us to fulfill this crisis. Hmm. Then we resolved these. That wasn't relevant. So now we have to resolve these. Okay, improved salvage scanner will purify the sector. We get an extra reclaim and bounty token. We also get to deploy using combat replicators. There's now three corvettes here. The bounty token says one energy and science. The reclaim token is a science guild, and then these two are right. Okay, so scientists guild means we now have 10 total science production. That's a yield of eight, not bad. We can activate the fleet power or deploy it. And again, I'd rather deploy. Oh, deploy it. We already fulfill this. Yes, good. See, now we have four corvettes, five, six, seven, eight in pure sectors and three pure sectors. So this is fulfilled. Good. Goodbye. And uh, we get a sector defense and two points. Hooray.
So we have fully resolved all of our technologies. Great. Come on. Now we can do the experiment action by paying one science using the effect of ancient ruins. So we get to do the third action on this card. That will fulfill this crisis, right? So that will be resolved. And we gain another corruption. I guess this is the most useless sector at the moment. So that means we produce again. So it's three energy, two credits, eight science. I would really like to produce the science, but man, paying, paying the upkeep is still such an issue. Yeah, I'm really not sure what to do here. I would rather get eight science than anything, but... But the three energy could be more helpful. We are about to play politics, which costs more energy as well. We'll be eating into our credits. We need more energy, yeah? Three energy takes us to four. We could produce credits, but it would be only two credits. So yeah, that's better. Um, all right, so we produce resources for gaining corruption. Now we get an agenda. Now, what agenda card? We are about to do politics, which doesn't match with anything, and then we will play leadership with this dominance agenda already. So I guess the question is, what are we going to do next cycle? So again, we're planning a cycle early, and we would just be doing lots of invading again. Probably playing progress again now that we can get lots of resources from corruption. Actually, on that note, temptation also becomes a better card for us. And, and if we are getting the purifier tech from this fallen house, that actually um, allows us to purify even more when we play temptation. I think it's quite likely we play temptation, so we would want another dominance agenda. <laughs> yeah. Yep, dominance all the way. Cool. I think we've just about seen all of the dominance agendas this game. This is for four or more pure sectors with three or more population. Five points. Okay, easy. And then for each stage on the economy track, four points. Well, uh, I mean, currently it's only nine points. But yeah, this one is for two or more pure sectors with five or more population, four points. We won't have that. We will just have the megalopolis. We'd have to increase population somewhere else. Uh, for each stage on statecraft, four points. Well, that's, that's going to be eight points. Hmm. So this is better right now with more potential upside? I don't know. But this one's, this one's 12 points. I think we still keep this one. Yeah, regardless. But anyway. Cool. So that was all three actions of progress. And we dealt with the crisis at the same time. We took all three actions. Okay. So now we would do politics. So we can take the sector before scoring glory with leadership. Politics. Politics probably with a trade token since we'll just get one back. And indeed, we can start getting more food, yeah, from the trade bonuses. All right, uh, it's a war. So in cycle two, resolve the crisis board. And it's with plus one, void one attack. So at the moment, that's two attack. But given we have safe defenses everywhere, only one void board makes it through, and our shields means we kill off the other. So we can handle that. For successfully defending, place a void board on an adjacent sector. That's that's fine. All right. So now politics with a trade token. First, we can inspire. So we'll pay one science to advance on this track, and we will activate one fleet power and purify. So let's get rid of this. We also prevail. 
So we will pay to energy and a credit to upgrade this to a five and send these three Corvettes in. So we absorb the approach damage. Then three versus three, we absorb the salvo damage while killing Voivon. Three versus two, we kill off another Voivon, they kill one of ours, but escape pods. So this replenishes in our home sector. Then we kill the remaining void one and win the sector with two corvettes. We can deploy another with combat replicators. We get this and score 19. 19 for glory takes us to 132. Then that will be lost. Uh, sorry, then that will be lost. Okay. Right. So. We've done those effects. Wait. I was like, wait, we didn't um, redeploy with hyperdrive, but we didn't need to. Okay. Um, purify the sector with salvage scanner. And combat replicators. Yes, bounty token, reclaim token. Values for science and a point. The reclaim token is for an installation or two points. Now, hmm, if we put down the shipyard, that's three points instead of two points, but we are making upkeep worse. That's what I'm afraid of. We're about to gain a new trade token. We're about to do leadership and we probably want to spend a trade token. All three of these actions are good for us, which means we would have six upkeep here, seven, eight. Uh, the Megalopolis has an innate upkeep, nine. We only have four food right now. I'm actually very tempted to do a third catastrophe to get the food we need. And Given that, hmm, given that we could be all right with the extra upkeep, but then we're going to be really desperate for food next cycle too. I think it's going to be safer to just gain the two points. So who knows? We might have excess food at the end of the game and then be full of regret, but I think the two points here is wiser. So let's just gain two points. And then we control. So we're going to pay a credit to gain a trade token, and this will let us activate fleet power or gain more credits. So, or science, but we don't need that. We need the credits, probably. We don't need food if we are doing a catastrophe, which I feel we really do need to do. All right, so we're going to gain this and get two credits, putting us at three credits. We will wait a second. We're about to get to copy an action using heroic leadership, and we could copy innovation to produce science and credits. Now that our credits are maxed, but even then, that, that action costs food. All right, we do gain the credits then. We're going to... We, we, we can move a corruption as well, actually. So if we moved this to a sector... I mean, as I say, we're probably going to purify everything anyway. We'll attack this sector last. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We defend the skirmish. Any no, we're, we're taking a catastrophe anyway. So, yeah, but eh. we've done all three of the actions. We return this trade token. Now we can... Get a catastrophe. We, we need the food so badly. We, 
weight. We need to activate more fleet power to be able to deploy stuff as we attack. And maybe we don't need the credits. We'll lose two credits from gaining the trade token. We will get this instead, because this had, hadn't returned at the time. This is where we took the trade token from. I think that's more important. Yeah. And we can pay energy or materials to make up for any food shortfall. So we incur a catastrophe, so we don't have to resolve that war. We get five food. Okay. So now we're at nine food, but we may have to pay one to do that innovation action. What else might we copy with leadership, right? We would get another agenda that's probably not needed. We could invent again, but we can't gain. Uh, wait, yes, we can. We've got politics up here. We could gain another advanced tech. We could get advanced hyperdrive. OK, so we won't be spending this food cost. We won't do that. I mean, all that production would have been nice. We should be at max credit production now that we have these bankers guilds. So we have eight yield. So why don't we research advanced hyperdrive before it goes away? We could copy the production focus, but uh, I don't think there's anything that useful there. No, we don't have our yields high enough. We don't really need to advance these. We're about to purify as much as we need to um, when we take Cradmore's system. All right. So that's our whole politics turn done. And we did a catastrophe for that war. Let's now play heroic leadership with this agenda card. Uh, so alert. It's a level two. Precision Strike, remove a Harbinger, or discard this by letting the Voivon consume a basic tech. And there are certainly basic techs that we won't want to research now, so that's fine. I mean, it's five points to them. Uh, waiting till we remove a... Wait, we are removing a Harbinger. Yes, let's spend a trade token so we can do that. Okay, good, that's fine. All right. Heroic Leadership. We will first want to invade here, so before we score, right? So we will use the agenda action. Now, hyperdrive will let us redeploy. So we're going to move two corvettes here, and then this corvette just goes one, two. Yeah, because now it's adjacent through the wormhole. So now all three of them, wait, do we need all three of them? We don't need all three going into Cradmore's system, do we? So let's save one behind, helping to hold that sector, which has fewer sector defenses. We only move in two corvettes because we have an approach absorption against those two sector defenses. So only one corvette is lost, and then it goes back to the home sector. And we win. Now we get to deploy with combat replicators. We get this glory. We will now score 18 points. Oh, we get to upgrade glory as a reward. So why don't we resolve that first? We get 19 points. OK, so 154. We get to purify as well. We get to research the purifier tech. We already have salvage scanner. And that's going to become our sixth tech slot. When you gain this tech, you can spend the science to purify. We have, well, we purify this using salvage scanner. And then we've got one more thing to purify in our home sector. But actually, the leadership card will let us purify that. So we will not bother with this effect right now. And we get a bonus bounty and reclaim token.
two materials. And a, another bank is killed. Uh, hmm. Not really needed over the food. Hmm. It's just that more guilds can get us more points. We have not seen the heroic production card yet. And if it comes out, which is a three in four chance, then it will score us three points for each guild that we have. So that's probably better to hold out for. And in any case, there are some crises that require you to lose guilds. I think it's still better to gain the guild here rather than one resource. So Banker's Guild, lovely. And that was our attack. Now, is this any better than our current dominance agenda? No, this is 12 points. This is nine. It's nine, but it potentially goes up to 21. Could this get much higher? This is 12, it will go to 16 when we get statecraft higher. And then could we get more sectors at three or more population? We'd have to use population increasing actions, which is a bit hard to do. So actually, while this scores less now, it could score more in cycle three. Enough to make that difference. I think I'm actually going to swap this out. We're going to swap it for this. All right, so we'll lose this now. Although we'd have to increase, we'd have to increase economy four times in addition to statecraft two times. No, I don't think we can spare the actions for that. We'll, we'll keep this. We'll keep this then. Fine. All right. Now. Where were we? We've done these effects, these effects, that effect. Okay, so now we can, since we use the trade token, we can resolve all three of these actions. We can first rise, so we will pay four resources. We seem to have too many materials. We'll spend three of them. Oh, we're, we're about to clear this harbinger. So we'll only need one materials and energy. So we will spend four materials. We don't really need all the science either. Let's save one materials. We'll spend one science instead. Uh, okay, so we spent three materials, one science in order to score our glory again. That's 19 more points. Whoops. Okay, so 173. Now, we can utilize, so we will discard a glory token. This was going to be lost anyway, so that's not a cost. And we get to purify a sector, we'll purify our home sector, and copy an action on another card from our preferred foci here. That will be innovation. We can do the invent action, so we'll pay two science. I would be down to zero science. Actually, that is a risk. Yeah, I'll pay one extra materials, one fewer science from the previous action, sorry. So we paid four materials to do this. Now we pay two science, and we're down to two science. So we'll pay one there, and we'll float one science just in case we get another war early on next cycle, or something like that, or if we want to play a card that costs science. But anyway, um, that means we research. So we can now get a fourth improved tech, right? We've met three improved tech thresholds, one, two, three and a fourth one from the ancient ruins sector. So we will get improved hyperdrive, that's six points, and a an engineer's guild. So we go up to 179, and this should probably go here. So not only is this the biggest boost to production we can get, now we're on 10 energy, as I like to say, 10 energy, production. Uh, we also have three guilds and six populations in the pure sector, so that can help us start build safe havens. Now, we will repel. So we pay one resource, and so we can, we can spare in energy, I suppose, in order to remove a harbinger. That's gone. So we did all three actions, 
we did the agenda action, this trade token returns, and we removed a harbinger, so this crisis is resolved. Now, we have played five cards, that takes us to evaluation. We now do a skirmish with void one power of one. We defend everywhere with these sector defenses. We also pay these resources, so one materials, one energy, and one science. We're down to one credit, one science, and nine food, which we now pay as upkeep. Just double checking that. So we've got uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh no. I forgot there's two upkeep here. We actually have 11 upkeep. Okay, we have to lose six points to that. Wow. Sorry, that was a big blunder. Like, I'm, I'm very confident we will win anyway, but <laughs> we're going to lose six points. And I wonder what I could have done to prevent that. Perhaps with different ordering of the cards so we could produce with the corruption from progress um, when we had higher yield, like when we got this eight energy yield that could have helped. Oh, well, we'll lose all nine of our food. Ah, that's the thing. We could have saved a trade token and not used it with leadership, but removing the harbinger was too important. Okay, so we lose nine food. I don't think it's that detrimental. We'll lose six points along with that. We're down to 173. Uh, now we can build a safe haven again because of this sector and then we will resolve this so eight upkeep that we've met an agenda card or eight or more installations which we certainly have five six seven eight nine ten installation twelve installations eight points and I think we'll get the eight points so that takes us to 181 now Huh. Now we can score our agendas. All right. So, origin card. For having pure sectors with two or more fleet power in them, four points. So that's one of the reasons I saved this Corvette behind, actually. And I think I immediately forgot to explain my logic there when I decided that. But that's eight points uh, for these two sectors with two Corvettes each. Uh, for each sector with a shipyard, three points. One, two, three, four. It's 12 12 plus 8, 20. There's no corruption in our house mats. So we don't lose points there. 201. Then, three or more sector defenses or star bases, five points. We do have that. Then, for every deployed fleet power and pure sectors, two points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 25. 226. Zero corruption on our sectors, which we have. Seven points. Oh, I was just thinking, actually, one way we could have avoided the upkeep is to abandon that sector, but then we would have lost points from glory. So I, I think it's fine. And this sets us up to take more actions with innovation and progress in the next cycle. But yes, seven points. And then we do have a sector with no empty guild slots. So that's four more points, taking us to 237. And finally, we don't have a track at stage three, unfortunately, but we do have four sectors with three or more population. So that's 12 points, 249. So that will end the cycle. Great. Let's clear this card and see three new heroics, which are production, wonderful, reinforcement, and prosperity. So as I said before, we will try and score lots of points with this card. Uh, now we must reset the alerts. So we just need uh, two level twos, two level threes, and the final war. So there's two wars in here somewhere. Now we remove a trade token and get rid of this for new improved techs. Purifier, escape pods, targeting, and tactical transports, and a new event. So, Wind of Annihilation, five card plays. Corrupt your house mat if able, otherwise corruption anywhere. So, corrupt a house mat thing. 
I mean, I don't know which of these Civ tracks we might be going up soon, so let's just put it on an agenda, but we'll certainly clear it before the uh, end of the game. Uh, at the end of each player's first turn, they must resolve a skirmish with plus one Voidborn strength. Okay, well, we better clear this very soon then. Although we can survive two strength, can't we? We have the salvo absorption from shields, and everywhere has a sector defense to deal with the first one of the two Voidborn two. Um, right, actually, we gain corruption, so we get to produce. So we could get eight energy, eight credits, or eight science. Let's definitely get the credits to start with. So up to nine credits. Okay. Now, advance on the Civ track and or gain a population or deploy three fleet power. And we only have one to deploy, so we'll certainly get the first option here. Uh, if we advanced on statecraft, because we, we want to get this to the end, um, we would research. Wait, we've got no spare basic slots. And we've got four improved techs already, which is all we're allowed. We would have to go up on the society track once to unlock another improved tech first. So let's not do this yet. We could actually do this first then and get rid of this corruption immediately. That's not a bad idea. Ah. Huh. Interesting. Because we could actually go up here, start the cycle with prosperity again, um, to go up again, we could actually get both of these thresholds and improve all of our technologies. All right, I have to figure out that that's going to be possible soon. But um, first, let's look at these rewards. So for each pure sector with four population, one point, five population, three points, six population, six points. We have a sector here for six, and then like what, seven, eight? Uh, that's not great. This is for every pure sector, beyond your first four, five points. Well, we already have one, two, three, four, ignore those, and then four more here, 20 points from that. And we are bound to get more. We'll be invading probably three times, maybe all four times to conquer the entire galaxy. So yeah, that, that's gonna score us heaps. That's, that's wonderful. Now, this whole thing, if we did, If we're doing heroic production, we are going up on society anyway, at some point. So I, because I don't think we're going up that many more times on, or we could, you know, we could. If we wanted to <laughs> pick up another might agenda, get the corruption, although we, we have more than enough ways to heal corruption now, especially with the purifier tech, and especially if we think we are going to get improved purifier at some point. So, okay, I think what I want to do now is try and figure out what my five car plays will be before I decide on this civilization bump. But we will certainly need two statecraft bumps, and then either three society bumps or one society bump from production, and then two with uh, the economy track. So we almost certainly play production. We do have heroic prosperity and reinforcement there. And we want to invade at least three times. Well, this wouldn't let us do that, would it? We want to play progress because we can produce the stuff we need by gaining corruption. We were thinking temptation would be really good as well. Uh, actually, temptation can let us go up. Temp temptation can let us go up a sieve track here. It can also let us go up a sieve track, um, but only production by copying it. And that's that's a reason to ignore economy altogether, I think and just go up society a bunch of times. So, so actually already that, that works, right? Temptation goes up two tracks, at least one of which is, it could just be society both times. Production is the third society bump. Uh, then, then politics 
is a state crop pump and we just need one more. And that would have to be that would have to be the reinforcement card. And then that's five cards already. But that would take us to the end of this track and also meet all thresholds for researching the, the improved text, which we can get with with this effect on the state card track and with the progress card. Uh, temptation can also be played with a dominance agenda. So that is that is three attacks, progress, politics, and temptation. So we get our three attacks, we get all the bumps we want. Okay. So I think we're fine there. The thing is, we would want we would want to play heroic reinforcements, I think, then. Because our reinforcement is going to let us muster, but without as much of a benefit. And we don't mind if it's the lowest Civ track that goes up, if it's society, instead of choosing. Hmm. Wait, wait, we're getting a sieve bump now. Sorry. So, huh. Okay, so, so then maybe temptation doesn't copy production. We could just copy something else. But still, that, that's, that's giving us some good flexibility. Uh, we want to get this might agenda before, before we play progress so we can actually use it. So let's start with a bump up on society using this effect so we can purify this immediately. We then improve population. I guess we'll just do this sector. We want three population everywhere for this agenda. So that goes up. And then these are the five cards we're playing, probably. Before we research, we need to, well, we, we can research now, but before we research for the second time, we need to get up here. But uh, that's easy enough with the production card. Mm. Oh, and we want to play, we want to play heroic reinforcement while this is still our lowest track. So we might actually start with heroic reinforcement and and given all the purification we're going to do with temptation and advanced purifier i think i'd like to do the bottom action here then we can gain points from like installations or, or maybe remove a crisis if there's a really bad one but we can start with reinforcement let's play that heroic reinforcement and we'll probably do those two actions since we shouldn't need to muster these texts are giving us all the firepower we need to hop from sector to sector killing stuff Okay, so here we go. It's a level two crisis. Stronghold of humanity, increased population while already having a pure sector with five or more population. And we have one such sector. Are we going to increase population though? Uh, heroic production can do it, but I don't know that we were interested in doing this effect. It would certainly help with scoring more with this, um, but not much. Yeah, I know. And the text won't help us with population. So we can discard this to corrupt a sector. And I keep saying, oh, we can gain more corruption, but now it's starting to look like maybe we're gaining too much. Uh, but the corruption will let us produce. I guess we can decide then, like when we play progress, whether it is worth getting all these corruption costs to do all the actions. Uh, so, yeah, and we get purification here too. Yeah, let's discard that and we'll see. So, heroic reinforcement, we can first withstand, so we will gain corruption anywhere, doesn't really matter, to gain two installations. Or we could just clear this crisis. But, but gaining a corruption to not have to gain a corrupt... I guess it's a it's a produce action, isn't it? That's that's actually fine. This lets us produce, and then it saves us from gaining the extra corruption. We just wouldn't be able to produce again. Um, yeah, I didn't know about that. 
<laughs> We've gained the corruption. We get to produce. Let's get science because it's eight science credits or energy. We'll get science, which we know we'll need. And so wait, we're going to get another corruption if we let this happen, then two corruption from progress, one corruption from temptation. So that's going to be five corruption, five corruption. We have like all this corruption will clear as we attack because of salvage scanner. Okay. So we have one purify action here, one when we take the rift, so it's two so far. Uh, when we gain improved purifier, that's going to be another one, three. When we use temptation up to twice, you can spend science to purify, five. So that's actually okay. Although we might need the flexibility of using purifier to deploy. If we think we can get away without doing that, we actually don't mind gaining all this corruption. It actually helps us to... Wait, we're about to gain a might agenda. That's going to be another corruption. Six corruption. Um, heroic production also purifies. Okay, so we can actually purify six times. We're fine then. <laughs> I think we're fine. So yeah, let's let's not worry about the. Oh wait, the point is moot. Sorry, this is remove an economic. Sorry, it's remove a military or general crisis only. It doesn't count this. It's an economic crisis. We're gaining all the corruption anyway. But that was fine. That was a good um, you know exercise to make sure that we can deal with whatever corruption we are planning to get right now. If there are more sources of corruption coming up, then we will need to rethink that maybe. Uh, so let's gain two installations. This could also help us with defending because this sector would be vulnerable, right? It needs a sector defense. Uh, but then we can just put shipyards in, in places to score uh, with our origin card. So yeah, so we'll put this down. Good. Now we can do the accelerate action. We have excess science, so let's just pay that. Uh, yes, pay four science, puts us back to five science. Now we can redeploy up to five times. Let's move a corvette over here. Because we will either take the rift or this soon, right? Then we don't need all these forces, so we can also move it here. Yeah, we'll definitely conquer those two, possibly this one. But if we choose to conquer this instead, we can remove the Harbinger with a safe haven. All right, now we get to go up on our lowest track, which is going to be this um, society, which lets us gain a might agenda, uh, which will mean we gain this corruption. Wait, we actually have a chance to overproduce now. We could overproduce credits. But we actually have one too many credits. I say too many, it doesn't matter. But if we paid a credit instead of a science for this action, we still get to overproduce and we have one more science. So why not? OK, so we actually paid three science and a credit to do this. Now we gain the might agenda. And this might look more promising now, actually. So this is, we have the four or more credit yield. We have one, two, three, four, five sectors with one or more shipyards or star bases. So that's, but that's still only 17 points. This scored us 25 points last time. All right, it doesn't matter, but maybe there's a chance that this is even better. Whoop. So for having eight or more materials yield, five points, every sector with two or more uh, fleet, fleet power in at five points. Which does overlap with this, but at this stage we are going to be spread pretty thin, so I'm not so sure that's going to be great. Eight or more science yield five points for every pure sector with one or more sector defenses three points. That's going to be a lot of sectors, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, eighteen, twenty-three. This is twenty-three points, which is not going to be dependent on. These, these fleet power becoming tied up in the safe havens. 
right? Because we're going to build another safe haven from this sector. We're going to max out the statecraft track. That's another one. And then we probably want to get a fourth so we can complete another safe haven. That means none of this fleet power is going to be there. We'll still be capped at 25 points here. This scores 23, but could score even more if we, because we already have eight science yield. If we have, if we lock into any more sector defenses. Hmm. But we weren't going to place any more ourselves, right? Yeah, okay. It's not worth the risk. Uh, we'll just, we'll gain this, but we're probably still scoring this one. It's a might agenda. We gain the corruption. Uh, this sector doesn't matter. And we will produce credits. We have eight credits and eight yields, so we got to 15 stockpiled credits and overproduce, gaining three points. 252. Now, that was... Oh, we also get four resources, and now that we have so many credits and science, let's just get food, get food whenever we can. Four food now, that will help us for upkeep. And now we've done both those actions, so the card is dealt with. We can now discard this by gaining corruption to a sector, and um, yep, yeah, just place it there and produce again. Oh. Oh my gosh. I am I am very tempted. I'm very tempted to produce science and actually have saved science instead like gain some science instead of food so we can overproduce science as well that will let us build a safe haven. But actually, we can already overproduce twice in the turn with the progress card getting to corruption there and I think that would be better because we don't want to tie up all this fleet power yet. We're going to need to float some fleet power to help us attack stuff, to help us get to the end of the sieve track. All right, so we will just produce... Well, we can still produce science for the points. But we would have less food. We can... Huh. Interesting. So if we gained two science and two food with that top action of heroic reinforcement, now when we produce science, we overproduce, we get three points. It's just that then we might be in danger of not having enough for upkeep. It's risky. All right, let's not do that. We will stick with the four food. Let's play it safe. We're going to produce energy then, because we don't need more science right now, whereas the energy, that can help us pay for upkeep too. Okay. So then, we choose our next card. Choose our next card. Well, now we can go up statecraft and research, because we've reached another... Well, we could always have done that, but... Ah, sorry. One more thing. This. At the end of each player's first turn this cycle, they must resolve a skirmish with plus one void bond strength. Strength is one. We have the salvo absorption, but we also have sector defenses everywhere, so nothing happens. Great. Now we choose a card. So, so now we could do politics. And actually, I want to go up there soon because that's, you know, that's going to use up this fleet power. Uh, can we get more activated fleet power to do this too, though? That's the thing. Uh, yes, because we're about to research escape pods. Well, we'll have to then, won't we? That will get us the um, fleet power. Okay. So politics? Politics, then eventually we'll do progress to double overproduce, do the safe havens. Uh, production. We need to do production before we do temptation and and research yes so it is going to be this order right and actually in that case um progress can pick up an agenda card uh, agenda agenda card which could be something to use with production 
Good. So it will be a wealth agenda. Okay. This is our this is our whole cycle planned out now. Politics. Politics with the trade token. Because we'll just get one back. All right. Um, sorry, we've done this crisis. We gained um, the corruption and we produced energy. Good. That's gone. So now, alert. Level two. This is our world. After you invade, have a pure sector with three or more fleet power in it. And because Salvage Scandal lets us purify as we go, that could just be whatever sector we invade. So that's fine. Discard this to corrupt the support agendas and lose two energy. So hopefully it won't come to that. Let's just see if this will be possible. Invading with politics. Uh, if we send in... If we send in two fleet power here, we would do it, right? We would win with two fleet power and deploy another with combat replicators. Okay, so this would have to be the sector. It's just that um, progress can only invade a corrupted sector. So I would have preferred to invade the rift and then go for these later, but we can invade again with temptation and this agenda card anyway. At that point, we can take the rift. So we'll take the route at the very end. Okay. So, politics. We will first inspire. We pay one science and go up on the statecraft track. That means we must deactivate one fleet power, but then we get to research a tech. We now qualify for one, two, three, four, five improved technology so we can get advanced escape pods that is going to score us six points taking us to 258 we get a trade token and activate one fleet power the trade token also activates one fleet power now this is going to return the end of cycle let's do that now we can oh sorry no don't do that now because we're going to do this action to control so we pay one credit in order to grab another trade token. Now, this could score us three points, or it could get us resources. And are we still afraid of not having enough for upkeep, is the question. Hmm. I am a bit scared. Like, even though we could get in three points, I, I might just gain two food. Ah, uh, when we do... When we do a wealth agenda, we could place a food guild and produce food that way. We would be at six food production, unless we can discover more guilds with reclaims. But, hmm. Yeah, let's gain, let's gain three points because there are options for us getting more resources. Fine. Three points takes us to 261. Wait, if we're going up here, these will be deactivated, but we need to deploy forces as we attack. I actually think, now nah, we'll stay on 258, we actually need this effect. So we're going to activate the sleep power too. Hmm. So how are we advancing there again? It's with the temptation card, right? That's at the very end. Oh my gosh. What, um, that's at the very end. We will still have it. Because the thing is, if we're about to double um, overproduce with progress, we want to build a safe haven, it doesn't matter whether this is activated or not. We could double double temptation. Because we have a trade token to use. This would allow us to produce even more food too, if we get a food guild out. And activate fleet power if we well, that's that's activating fleet power. Okay, we don't need the fleet activation. Let's get three points. Okay. So we go up to 261. Right, now that that's settled, 
we have done these two actions, don't need to move corruption, don't care, we'll just prevail, so we will pay two energy and a credit. So actually, two energy and a science, yeah, let's save our eight energy here, because we've got eight energy production, we can get even more, um, we can overproduce that when we play progress. And, and then pay for upkeep with it as well. Okay, so we're just going to pay three credits. So we go down to 11 credits, and we're going to upgrade this to a four, and then invade. As we've said, we can't take this sector. Wait, yes we can, because we've got this Corvette. One, two, three, four. Right, we can take the sector first and purify with it. Okay, let's do that. So, these go in here. Now, we have approach absorption. So the sector defense fails. Now there's three of our Corvettes versus three Voidborn, so we fire at the same time and kill Voidborn while absorbing their attack, also with shields. Now we have three initiative versus two, so we kill another Voidborn, they kill one of ours. It goes back home due to escape pods. We kill the final Voidborn. And we have liberated the rift. So we will get this harbinger there. And then we flip the tile. It has population one. And we will get to purify or gain five resources. We are fine for resources now, so we will just purify a sector. We will also gain these bonuses. So combat replicators will deploy and then we gain a bounty token. Two materials. We get a, a reclaim token. That's a scientist's guild or one resource of our choice. Well, we are going to score for all our guilds in a sec, so let's get a guild. Putting our science production up one more. And we have resolved all of this, all of this. Escape pods, yep, shields, hyperdrive. All right. So now this trade token will return, and we've done all three of these actions. That's our turn complete. We will now... We've successfully done this. After you invade, have a pure sector with three or more fleet power in it. So that's done. So now we would do progress, and we can use this effect, right, to be able to do the third action. So we'll be able to do all three. Uh, so let's go ahead and reveal the next alert. It's a war. So in cycle three, we have to resolve the crisis board with plus one void one attack for successfully defending gain of corruption. Well, okay, there's an extra corruption that we might not be able to deal with. So that means we might not be able to do all of these corruption gaining effects. Yes, something to consider. So we already have two corruption right now. We're about to gain three more. Um, and we are going to purify so twice and then three times from advanced purifier and the temptation card, right? But if we gain this extra corruption, nothing else is going to help us with that. Okay, so we have to forego this ability. We will just do these two. And, and then, oh no. Uh, then we are corrupting an extra time this turn which would let us overproduce twice. We can't overproduce with the temptation card because... Wait. No, we can't. 
because we can't take that much corruption. Hmm. All right, that means we will have to build a safe haven out early. And we will be able to spare enough fleet power to hold two more sectors, right? We've got two spare corvettes here and one spare one here. So we would still have two fleet power to spend here. Okay, fine. So we'll do these two actions. And indeed, we could abandon this sector if we're not making use of it anymore. We'll figure that out when we play Temptation. We still need to hold it when we play Temptation to research the final advanced technology. Okay, so we're doing these two actions. Right. Wait when... Wait when... We're not. No, because we needed... Ah, oh, we needed this threshold to do that research. I, I'm a dummy. Okay, we're going to do these two actions. Sorry, because for some reason... I know, I was thinking, okay, we're going to use exploit to research, but I had forgotten that we get this research action here too. Okay, so we will do these two actions. We can still gain an agenda to play with production. So we will gain corruption to a sector, and that will allow us to produce energy so that we overproduce. So we go up to 15 energy. We had eight and there's eight yield and we gain three points. Then we will ambush, paying two energy and a credit, but actually we'll just pay two credits. Sorry, pay two energy and a science. We'll pay two credits and a science. So we can keep all of these credits for now. We are about to overproduce credits again when we gain this corruption. So now we can ambush. First, hyperdrive lets us redeploy. So we're going to move two corvettes like so, and then the this corvette two over here as well. And now we can take this sector. So we'll move in three corvettes versus there two. Uh, we will. Kill one, they attack us, but we have salvo absorption, we kill the other. We gain this glory, now scoring 21 points from glory takes us to 285. We take this harbinger, I think we place it here because we can withstand more voidborn attack. Voidborn attack of two is totally fine. Uh, we will get this and a bonus bounty token. Oh, wow, lots of food, wonderful. So this is a food and energy, and this is just two food. So three food then. Uh, two food, but maybe if we can't gain the energy because we're capped, maybe we gain a point instead. We've got six food, we've got 15 energy, which is seven upkeep met. So actually, that's fine. We'll gain a point for this. Okay. We gain an extra reclaim token. That's a miner's guild and a credit guild. So materials production will go up by three. And that's going to be a lot more scoring with production. Wonderful. We also... Sorry, we're playing it with this agenda card. I should have mentioned that, but uh, that was always the plan. Um which means we can gain a trade token again. We don't need another bump here, right? So yeah, we've already, we're already getting enough agendas to play with everything. All right. Wait, did I just gain that corruption but not gain the agenda card? We're meant to gain a wealth agenda, but we'll do that, we'll do that as the action after this. That's fine. Um, so we resolved, no, we haven't. We need to, res to um, deploy this using combat replicators effect, because we won the combat sector. Uh, we gained the bounty token, we gained the reclaim. We we have now purified, wonderful. We didn't lose any fleet, so escape pods doesn't work. Shields happened, hyperdrive happened. Okay, good. So now 
we do the experiment action, we gain that corruption. Uh, and then we will get a wealth agenda. So this one is for two or more trade tokens, three points. Uh, for each pure sector with zero upkeep, three points. Well, we're probably going to be spending these, right? We have to spend one for the heroic production action. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and then a seventh sector, if we take either of these, uh, for 21 points, um, sectors without upkeep. 21, uh, compared with this, which is only scoring us 11. This is, this is good enough. I don't know if we'll necessarily find a better wealth agenda. So let's keep this. Uh, then we have resolved that action. So now we can do the agenda card. And we don't need that effect because we don't need more agendas. Um, so we will get a trade token. And that will get us three more points. Okay. Right, but you can see the problem now with our fleet power, right? We are completely out of fleet power, and we're going to have to recall some in order to pay this cost to go up statecraft. But, uh, oh well, that's fine. Um, now that's resolved, compare it to this might agenda. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's 18 plus the five, 23 points again versus 25. Hmm. Yeah, this goes away. All right. Let's reveal this. And now we have, we've got these, these cards. Oh, right, the war. So the crisis board, uh, Voidborn Skirmish of plus one on the board, plus one for this card. It's a total of two. Everywhere that's adjacent to Voidborn has a sector defense, except for this one. Um, this one doesn't have a sector defense, but it's not adjacent to Voidborn. Uh, so one Voidborn gets blown up in the sector defense sectors, and then the second Voidborn gets blown up with um, our shields, right? We blow one up without taking a hit. In this sector, right, we got more initiative. So we blow up a Voidborn, they attack us, but the salvo absorption, then we blow up the other. So we lose nothing. Then we gain a corruption, and for doing so, we will get to produce... So we can produce credits. We will go up to um, overproduce credits. We're now on 15 credits. We had eight uh, yield and nine stockpile, right? So overproduce, we get to 292 points. That was the second time we overproduced this turn because we already did so uh, with gaining this corruption. So we can now build a safe haven. And I don't think we're going to get another easy opportunity to do that, right? We're going to build a safe haven when we top out this track and also when we do um, evaluation for this sector. And so that will give us two, two of them. Although I now realize actually this could let us purify as well. Huh, let's re remove a uh, harbinger first, yeah? So we're going to recall this fleet power to then build this safe haven that allows us to remove a harbinger. I think we'll just conquer this last. So we can remove this harbinger and make the skirmishes easier to deal with. Let's remove this one to make it a bit cheaper. No, we've got plenty of credits stored up. It doesn't matter. We'll remove this, it's safer. In case we get a military um, crisis that we can't deal with. Okay, so that's the whole turn done. We did the war. So now we will do production with this. We're actually gonna do heroic production. We could use a trade token. We could save up two. We could just spend a trade token for this action, save, save two trade tokens. Mm. to get three points. But if we use a trade token, given that we should be a solvent with upkeep, we can actually do this action as well, which would, which would allow us to overproduce energy again while getting 
more food. And actually we would, huh, when we get six, no, that's only four yield if we get six food um, production with this by putting a food guild there. Uh, so we would not be overproducing food. We would only overproduce once, but still, that's only three points anyway. Hmm. All right. I guess we won't play a trade token. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's look at the alert. It's another war. So the Voidborn will attack with plus five initiative and for successfully defending two Voidborn on an adjacent sector. And well, that would have to be this one. And then that sector is going to be too difficult to take. <laughs> wow. All right. We may not be able to take another sector then without abandoning one. Interesting. Which could still be that sector. Hmm. All right. We'll figure that out soon. So uh, we're doing heroic production. We're going to first thrive. So we will pay this trade token. Sorry, it returns here to get three points for each one of our pure guilds. And we've actually corrupted everywhere. Sorry. Let's just um, uncorrupt some stuff first. We'll do the optimize action. So we will recall one fleet power to purify, let's purify this, and go up on the society track, which will purify again. And then we can increase a population as well which almost doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. We'll just increase, we'll increase this. Because that will max out our science production. Now at 15. Just in case that matters. Um, so... Now when we thrive, all of these guilds are pure. There's just that one, which is a shame, but oh well. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve guilds, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, plus one more if we do this first. Sorry, let's do this first. definitely there. Food goes up to six production. And then we produce that self-same resource. So we get four more food, taking us to 10 food. Now we've actually got a 13th guild. Let me double check that. So we did this. Now we're doing this action. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Great. Yeah. No friends gaming where you get to see some loser count to 13 uh, a bunch of times in a row. All right. So that's 13 times 3, which is 39 points. That takes us to 300 and 31. 331 points. We also get to remove a Harbinger. So are we attacking this? We still attack this right over that one, because how are we going to get two fleet power across to there while abandoning that sector, if that's the one? Because we wouldn't want to abandon any of these other sectors. They score too much for us. Yeah, we would still be attacking this sector. Knowing that... We can remove this Harbinger. Okay. So... Now... We have resolved both of these actions and the agenda card. So that goes away. We must choose whether to store this agenda and it is scoring higher than this. So we'll get rid of that support agenda. We still have three different agendas. Good. 
So we don't care about filling guild slots anymore, but still, that gained us more food to then spend for the extra upkeep it's given us. Um, yeah? Right. So with that done, let's do the war. And the Voidborn will attack with five plus five initiative, so they get to fire first. But wherever they do it, either they were blown up by this or we have salvo absorption and then blow, blow them up. Um, no, their strength is zero anyway. All right, so nothing happens. Hooray. Now, our final card, Temptation with this agenda. And given that we're about to purify three times, one, two, and then a third one here, we could actually afford to get this corruption too and then purify a fourth time when we build this safe haven. So, and then we can overproduce more, get more points for doing that. So that will be worth more than saving the trade token. Uh, yep, let's do this. And our final alert is a level two crisis, which is lost cargo. After you deploy, choose to also spend five resources out of food, materials, and energy in any combination. You may not use credits or discard this by losing a trade token. And at that point, we probably don't need this anyway. So... Let's go ahead and play. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get the advanced purifier. Right. Wait a second. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is something that came up in the last game and I, I didn't realize it was a thing until afterwards when I was editing the footage. We're about to research Advanced Purifier, which triggers on us playing the Temptation Focus. So we can resolve this effect, get the Advanced Purifier, and then resolve this effect. Even though it's a similar effect, we get to do it again. And so we can actually purify everything. We definitely use... Yeah, oh my gosh. So we were never really in trouble uh, when it came to purifying. That's so funny. All right. So, so in what order are we doing all this? Ah, oh, there's this ability too. Okay, so we're going to research. Yes, the exploit action is going to let us copy the innovation card, invent. So we pay two sites and get advanced purifier. One, two, advanced purifier. Because now, whoops, here, um, that we have this, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can qualify for a sixth advanced tech. Um, sorry, before we do that, spend one science to purify. Now we play advanced purifier and we'll be able to do this, but let's gain some corruption to purify first. Uh, we also get six points. That takes us to 337. We also get to purify and or deploy. So, okay, sorry, I totally forgot about that effect. That means we will be able to take the sector anyway. So we purify again, get, getting rid of that. And then we can deploy this here. So we will take that sector. Wonderful. Now, we have done the research action. Now we can do these two. We also want to invade. Does the order here matter? We should invade first because we might lose some stuff. No, we need to exert first. So we're going to activate one fleet power. We gain a corruption first, sorry. Gain a corruption, corrupt this again, which will allow us to produce science. So we produce 15 science and we're storing one at the moment. So we go up to 15 stockpile and gain three points, saying it's to 340 for overproducing. Then we go up one activation. We also deploy at home then we can produce two different resources. So if we just produce energy and credits, we overproduce uh, twice. I mean, we're at max stock, stockpile everywhere anyway, but that gets us six more points for overproducing two more times. Uh, and now we can, before we conspire, we can invade. So we are going to use this agenda action we will first use hyperdrive to redeploy this corvette, one, two. 
We also have two corvettes here. So actually, let's just move this one further. Now I can invade with those three. Um, sorry, I forgot. And this was the whole reason we needed more firepower and we're worried about it. We actually have to put two more Voidborn here for winning the war. Right, this war, have two uh, more Voidborn on an adjacent sector, and there is only one adjacent Voidborn sector. So actually, we don't have to abandon that after all. Now, we have equal initiative, so we fight at the same time. Killing one, our salvo absorption absorbs the other. We have more initiative, we kill one, they kill one. It escapes back home. We kill the final Voidborn and have one. We get the Harbinger, doesn't matter if it goes on the economy track. Now, uh, we also, huh, we deployed. We deployed with our temptation card, sorry. So this has been resolved. We can spend five food, energy, or materials in any combination. So we'll spend five energy. So that goes away. Now we will gain resources. So, sorry, we'll gain a bounty token. Two energy. Wait, do we need it? So currently we can cover 15 upkeep. 16 upkeep, 8, 9, 10, yeah, we're fine. So let's gain a point, gain a point for that. We gain this glory, we should not have this, it should have been discarded at the end of the last turn. So now we will score 20 points for glory, taking us to 367. Now this is lost, we will get a reclaim token, which is a food guild, which we now don't need. We don't need the resource either. But here's a food guild. We purify the sector, thanks to salvage scanner. Then we resolved escape pod, shields, hyperdrive. We haven't resolved this effect of improved purifier. So we can do that in a sec. But first, since we use the trade since we use the trade token, we can do the third action here, conspire. So we will gain corruption again. Doesn't matter where. We will overproduce again. So let's overproduce energy. So we got 10 energy and 8 production yield. So we got to 15 and gain 3 points, saying us to 370. And we will go up on the statecraft track. Okay, to do this, we must deactivate two fleet power. That means we are recalling this corvette and this one here. Yes, because we need one corvette to hold each sector. Now we can pay that. This goes up. We gain 24 points, 394. And... Now we will resolve this. Temptation focus up to twice. You may spend one science to purify. So we will do that now, going down to 13 science and getting rid of the last two corruption. No corruption, just this. All right, that's fine. Good job, me. So we've now resolved this. And would this score any more? Well, we're about to pay for upkeep, so we're whittling down all these resources. This is scoring us already 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 plus the 4, 19 points. This is going to be 5 plus no. All right. <laughs> 5 plus no. So that's all done. We did it. Yes, we resolved that crisis. There are two left over. Um, we did all of the techs. We've played five cards this cycle. All right, that ends cycle three. Well, evaluation now, right? So the crisis board happens and skirmish of um, attack power one means we defend well enough everywhere. We're totally fine. We then have to pay these resources. We got plenty of credits though. So we'll pay four credits and a science. Now we pay for upkeep and our total upkeep is six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. Great. So we'll go down to zero food. 
and we'll pay four energy on top of that. So we paid 10 food for energy to cover 12 upkeep. Now, safe havens happen. Sorry, when we went up there, we meant to build this uh, safe haven. Okay. Then we get another safe haven from this sector having six population and three or more guilds. So that's completed. But I don't think there's any benefit from here for us. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's just remove a harbinger to assert dominance. And then we will do this. So we definitely score the bottom thing here. For every sector in excess of four, that's pure, five points. So one, two, three, four sectors to ignore. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? So that's going to be 35 points. 35 points. Wow. Okay. So that's going to be 429. Now, we score our agendas for our origin card. We do not have a sector with two or more fleet power in it. Too bad. We do have pure sectors with one or more shipyards. One, two, three, four, five. Five such sectors means that we score 15 points. There's no crutch on our house map. 15 takes us to 444. Then, three or more sector defenses or star bases, which we have, five points. Every deployed fleet power, well, four of our fleet powers there, so there should be ten out here, two points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty-five. Twenty-five takes us to 469. Then, two or more trade tokens, we don't have that, but pure sectors with zero upkeep, three points. Uh, that would be this, two, three, four, five, six. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six such sectors gets us 18 points. 18 takes us to 487. And then for having a sieve track at stage three or higher, which we do, four points, for every pure sector with three or more population, three points, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six such sectors. So 18 plus four, 22 points, takes us to 509. So we end on 509 points. And now all that's left is for us to score for the Void Bond. They have 140 points for us playing on hard mode. Then for each open rift, 30 points, but we close it, so none. For each incomplete safe haven, 20 points. There's one, 20 points for them, they are now on 160. For every catastrophe, 20 points. We have three, 60 more points, takes them to 220. For every harbinger on sectors, 10 points. There's none, zero. For every consumed technology, five points. There's none, zero. For every crisis, still on the crisis board, five points. There's none, zero. For every fallen house, still on the map, three points. House Bellatan here, three points. They are now on 223. For every corruption still in play, two points. There's this one. So that's 225. And then for every population in Voidborn sectors, one point. Well, there's no Voidborn sectors. So this is not a Voidborn sector. So there's zero points for that category as well. That means that the Voidborn have completed the game with 225 points against our 509 points, which means we win. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you've got any thoughts on strategy or how I might have played better, please post down below. But until next time, that's another dead robot.